Hi everyone and welcome to The Game Plan with Hunter Hughes. I'm Lucas Kinsey, voice of Buffalo football and West Texas A&M coming off of a tough loss this past Saturday as the Buffs traveled to Midwestern State, the number five ranked team in the nation. Buffs took it on the chin and lost uh, the tough one 45 to three. So with that loss, the West Texas A&M record on the season is overall three wins and five losses. And for West Texas A&M, it does not get any easier when you look at the upcoming schedule. Buffs host the number nine ranked team in all of Division II this Saturday, the Texas A&M Commerce Lions. Texas A&M Commerce uh, overall record of six wins and one loss. And just three games remain on the schedule. It's hard to believe with the season going by fast. Uh, so three games left. Two of those are out at Kimbrough Memorial Stadium, so that's good for Buff fans. And uh, with that, let's bring in our head coach, Hunter Hughes. Coach, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me again, Lucas. You're welcome. And, uh, Coach, I know uh, you go back on, on last Saturday, the, the game at Midwestern State, and it's a hard loss, 45-3, to, to a very talented team. Don't get me wrong. But uh, first, I want to talk about the weather. The weather was something that we thought was going to be an issue going into the game. In fact, it moved up to kickoff. It was originally an 8 p.m. kickoff late kickoff uh, schedule. They moved it up to five because of the storms that were supposed to come into Wichita Falls. You really didn't have to worry about weather uh, really until late in the game. There was five minutes and, and change left in that game when the score was 45 to three and lightning did show up. Storm started to show up and so the officials got together uh, and went ahead and called the game. But coach, this, this uh, was similar to some situations that we've seen uh, in the past when, when the Buffs lose. And the, and the situation I'm talking about is you go back to the first half and your team is playing some good football. Uh, the Buffs, in fact, you go second quarter, about four minutes and, and 50 seconds remaining in the half. Alex Schrag hits a career long, a 53 yard field goal for him. And it's 10 to three. And uh, it was 10 to three all the way up until 32 seconds left in the oh. second quarter. They get a touchdown strike. Uh, they get a touchdown pass. They miss the extra point. It's 16 to three. And then uh, the rest, you know, in that half really uh, was hard to overcome. They score. Uh, we fumble the kickoff, the mm -hmm. ensuing kickoff. And then they score one more time. They get a two-point conversion. So really, you go with 32 seconds left in the half, you go from being down 10-3 to three to being down 24-3 to three as you go into the locker room at halftime. And it was tough. Yeah, the, uh, the sad part about it is we're moving the ball. We're controlling the ball in the first half, yeah. in the first quarter especially. We have the ball for over 11 minutes. And uh, we just can't score. We can't get in the end zone. And uh, Alex missed a field goal, uh, which would have, you know, made it a little bit closer at the end. But, you uh, mentioned that we had a first and goal with a six. Yeah. And uh, you can't punch it in. You know, yeah. we're, we're again, we just we need to finish drives. And sure. I think if we do that, we're okay. And you know, we're four minutes to go. We kick the field goal. It's ten to three, and uh, we're feeling good. And then we have third downs. We can't get off the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, defensively, we. We got to stop people. We got third down and ten. Is third long is our worst third down percentage. It should be our best. So, you know that's all you know coaching wise and, and getting the guys in the right spot. And, yeah. You know we've been working on that and trying to get that done and try different things. And so we'll, we'll see how it goes. And uh, you know you get down there and you give up a pass that I you know to me it's questionable if, if mm -hmm. he catches the ball or not because the ball comes out. But you know they call it a touchdown, so we got to go with it. The one that Kevon made the play mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and then. Uh, you know, they kick off and the ball gets caught in the wind and yeah. we fair catch it just like we've, we've taught them to do. And it just goes right through right through the guy's arms, the kid's arms, and goes right down and bounces right into into their arms. And so they get the ball again with 30 seconds to go. And, uh, again, they hit a pass, you know, down the middle. We miss a couple of tackles and they get down there close. And, again, another questionable non-call by the officials and, and they score a touchdown on it. And, but you know you you got to play, yeah. and uh, you know it doesn't matter if the officials are making mistakes or not. Everybody's going to make mistakes. We we have to finish drives and we have to get off the field, and we weren't able to do that. And when you do that against a good solid team, yeah. the outcome turns the way it did. That's what we had talked about earlier in the week, just knowing that the Buffs weren't going to be able to make those mistakes to stay in the game. Uh, wanted to talk to Coach Hughes uh, as we're into the regular season, just three games left uh, in the in the season, Coach. And your first year as a head coach, wanted to ask you just a, a question in terms of the, the daily, the weekly, and the daily schedule for you when you're in the middle of a season. Uh, let's say it's game week and, and it's middle of the week. What does a day look like for you? I know you you had moved up the practices uh, yeah. to the morning, and so the guys are practicing early in the morning. But what's a day uh, in the game week look like for well, coaches? Typical Tuesday, Wednesday, well, any day. Uh, I try to get here about four thirty, quarter to five. Training room opens at five, and 
guys just to get them in the building. Uh, I can actually get a lot more work done at that time when there's nobody around. Yeah. We start meetings at 6 and then go to practice at, at 8. Uh, get done about 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and come in and then the defensive staff will watch film, the offensive staff will watch film. Uh, I've got different things that I've got to do, press conferences and, and little things that I've got to handle. Your favorites. And, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, um, and then we're, we're planning. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're meeting and, and coming up with schemes and trying to, to find some different things, uh, whatever. I particularly work more with the defensive side, so uh, trying to figure out exactly what we need to do to stop teams and, and our opponent. And, uh, draw cards then I start watching some special teams film to make sure we're on target there yeah. and I watch some of the opponent's defense to get an idea of what how when Ryan and I uh, talk about what we're going to do uh, offensively so I I have an understanding of why we're doing what we're doing um, so uh, my day pretty much goes from being here at the office quarter to five till anywhere it could be seven thirty, eight o'clock at night and mm -hmm. Uh, and go home, get up, do it all over again. I feel like you've learned a lot just in your first year as a head coach, just the differences in terms of going from coordinator to head coach. Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a growth process for anything just like this team is. Uh, you know, I, I've made some mistakes, and, uh, you know, you learn from them. Mm -hmm. and you hope not to repeat those mistakes, and I think that's how you get better. I think every one of our coaches has done that, and, and I think – you know, I think we got this team on the right track. Yeah. I believe that uh, we're doing the right things. We're pushing them, and uh, you know, we just see we got finish the year strong, yeah. which we want to do. And you know, nobody's given up here. Yeah. And you know, I think this is a perfect opportunity to come in and and shock the conference. You know, yeah. and get a chance to win this. You know, it's going to take a heck of an effort. I will say that we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. And we sure. can't make mistakes. And Again, if we do, a good team is going to take advantage of us. And uh, Coach Hughes obviously talking about this Saturday's opponent, the Texas A&M Commerce Lions, number nine ranked uh, in Division Two, six and one record. Of course, their one loss came to Midwestern State. Mm -hmm. That was a tough game for them, 47-42. That game played in Wichita Falls. And when you talk about the the Commerce Lions, you have to talk about their offense. In mm -hmm. this last weekend, uh, they only scored 34 points, but they did put 34 up on Angelo State. They won the game 34 to 20. Mm -hmm. Coach Luis Perez named a Lone Star Conference Player of the Week. I believe his third time uh, this season he threw for 368 four touchdowns uh, in that in that win and then also his favorite target this week was Marquise Wimberly he had eight catches over 100 yards and two touchdowns but Perez uh, is where it starts with uh, a guy who was a Harlan Hill finalist last year probably going to be a finalist mm -hmm. again this season they throw the ball all around they spread it to the tight end to the wide receiver to the running backs it starts with him talk about the commerce lines uh, it's a pick your poison for uh Perez. He, he can go. He's got a lot of weapons on the outside. Uh, <clears throat> he has thrown four touchdowns a game in the last six games, which yeah. nobody has done. And uh, so you look at that and, you know, hopefully that uh, we can end that streak uh, by keeping it at least under four. Maybe yeah. A little less than that would help us. But What uh, do you feel like makes him, him such a good quarterback? <clears throat> he's just so smart. I yeah. mean, he, he can sit there and he sees the reads and sees what he needs to do, and, and he can go from read to read and key to key, okay. and just from receiver to receiver you know, relatively easily, mm -hmm. you know, compared to a guy that sits there and he doesn't hold the ball. He knows where he's going to go with the ball if this one shut down, if that one shut down, knows right where to go. And that's yeah. experience, yeah. And, and he's got a lot of experience. And uh, Two-year starter. Yeah, he's got a good offensive line in front of us that protects him. And... Uh, you know, it, it makes it work. And, yeah. you know, you can't forget about the running game because they sure. pop a little runner back in there and, you know, he takes off. And now all of a sudden, you know, yeah. you're, you're concentrating on Perez and they're running for 100 yards a game, so, right. which they did last week. So um, they're, it's just they're a solid team. They're, yeah. they're exactly what we're we're trying to be, in all honesty. We're, we're uh, you know, going after them. They're they're. It's a big game. They've won the conference three years in a row, and until somebody knocks them off, then yeah. uh, uh, they're the team to beat. Sure. And mid uh, t Commerce, I should say, their defense uh, tops in the conference in, in terms of scoring defense, 16 points per game that they give up, so a stingy defense as well. When I ask Coach now uh, for your team specifically, and we'll start with the offense, what are things you want to see improve this week? Again, we know we're playing a tough opponent, but the offense moved the football last yeah. week, at least in the first half. It looked really good. So what, what things on the offensive side do you want to see get better? Well, you know, we're moving the football well, and then we fall behind, and we, we got to change kind of how we're thinking. And, and when you, a team makes you one-dimensional, 
uh, that hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got to maintain relativity in staying in two dimension ball club. Right? We've got to be able to run the ball to set up the pass. Sure. You know, if we have to throw the ball every play, then uh, we're in trouble. We just we don't have the weapons on the outside. Uh, you know, we, we've had issues in the offensive line. Uh, they're getting better. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if we're throwing the ball, it means that we're down and defensively we hadn't done our job. Sure. So, you know, the, the goal for us is, you know, winning the kicking game, winning special teams, uh, the hidden yardage there and punt returns and punts, things like that, kickoff, kickoff return, uh, limit the penalties, get turnovers like we always try to do. And, you know, just get to the fourth quarter with, the, with an opportunity to win the game. Sure. And, you know, you never know what happens then. So. Yeah, put your defense in good mm -hmm. situations and, and hopefully they can make plays yeah. as well. Well, Buff fans, this Saturday it's a 6 p.m. start out at Kimbrough Memorial Stadium. WT hosting Texas A&M Commerce. And again, at 6 o'clock this week, it is a pink out as Zeta Tau Alpha. Uh, the sorority here on campus is sponsoring breast cancer awareness this month, obviously. And so it's a pink out. Buff fans, bring your pink to the stadium and uh, support a great cause. I know I'll be wearing pink. A lot of the players and coaches probably wearing pink as well. So come out and support a great cause on Saturday at Kimbrough Stadium. That's going to do it for this week's episode of The Game Plan. And uh, we want to remind Buff fans, go to GoBuffsGo.com. You can get all your live stats there, your video as well. We'll have the game web stream for you this weekend. And then also you can get your post-game interviews and highlights as well on GoBuffsGo.com. For Head Coach Hunter Hughes, I'm Lucas Kinsey. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you Saturday night out at Kimbrough Stadium.